the true salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Hey man, you may say it. Good evening. Sorry about that, Brian. Might need to run out there and get him. Sorry about that. I thought you was. Got a man wanting to ride tonight, and we got confused on who's getting it. Thank you, Brother Brian. Toes is wanting to come to church tonight, and and uh, somebody thought everybody's going to do it, and everybody thought somebody's going to do it, and guess who did it? That's right. That, ain't that the way it goes in church? Now, if you're going to eat, or, you know, if you're going to play, you know, something fun, it's different. But when it comes to doing something for the Lord, uh, nobody gets stuck with it. Well, what a blessing. Good to see everybody out this evening now. We got some bad weather, y'all. And uh, we've got a lot of people sick. Miss Desi, uh, the report I got on Miss Desi is she can't get warm. And uh, so I, I just I just imagine her wrapped up in a bunch of blankets. So let's pray for her. So, I mean, I know that's funny, but it, it, it you get the chills, I guess. And it's this kind of, my daddy always said this is, that cold goes down to the bone when it's just kind of weather and you get chilled and you can't get warm. So let's pray for her. And now Molly has got it too. She got a fever of 102 and uh, got, got out of school half a day yesterday and all day today. So Kelly had to stay with her. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll get over this. I, me thinks I see the twilight of winter of this year. I do. I think it's about over. I really do. We might get a little more bad weather, but next Friday's March, y'all. We'll be getting some nice weather here in about two or three weeks. About we got the worst part of it is surely. Might come a freak snow in March, but um, I think nice days are ahead. Don't wish your life away. When you're dying, you'll wish you could come back to now. So don't don't sit around and say, I wish it was once spring. I wish it was just enjoy your day and live right because when you're dying, you'll wish you could come back. You can't. So uh, it's a blessing to be here tonight. Uh, let's just enjoy the Lord. Let's do pray seriously for people that sick with some kind of virus or something. I really don't know. It ain't really the flu. What what the, our kids had was like um, some a virus. Like uh, Frankie tested positive negative for flu and bronchitis. So it's something else. Uh, anyway, uh, let's remember those that are uh, sick tonight. Let's. Let's uh, pray. We're going to get right into our study tonight. Let's also remember um, Miss Sandy and others that had had a lot of trouble. Uh, the Lord continue to touch her, and his will will be done. And uh, we're the, the bigger kids are staying in here tonight since we're going to do our study on Islam and what it is, um, a difference between a Muslim and a Christian. So you need to know this. Our society now, it's changed so much that you need to know the difference between a Christian and a Muslim. Uh, so uh, that's what we're studying tonight and next Wednesday night also. Maybe even two more, but at least one more. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. If you got something or somebody on your heart you'd like for us to pray for, the Lord knows what that is. And uh, let's just bow our head and pray right now. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the rain. We thank you, Lord, for the water and the earth, Lord, as you promised you would. Lord, I'm glad and I'm thankful that we're allowed to be able to come to church tonight. We ask you that you would forgive us of all of our sins tonight, everything we've said or done wrong. We pray that you'll forgive us and cleanse us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, God, tonight for the opportunity of being able to gather together like this. I do pray for all of our church family that's sick tonight. Lord, for Miss Sandy, for uh, Molly, for, for Miss Desi, Lord, for... Uh, lots of others just been sick with a flu or, or some kind of virus or something. I pray you'd bless them. Have you in our hearts tonight. Do what ought to be done in our lives. We love you. Lord God, do something real in our hearts tonight. Teach us from the word of God. Give us wisdom and power and 
grace and 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 understanding of thy word, Lord. Help us to know what we believe, why we believe it, and to stand on it. I pray, God, for our, our brothers and sisters around the world that you'd help them in a great way, mighty way. Lord, bless our church, cause it to go and grow, prosper for the glory of God. Do what ought to be done in our life, Lord. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All right. Okay, right quick, we're going to make some announcements, fellowship, and we're going to get right into our lesson for tonight. Uh, don't forget, Saturday morning now, we're going visiting. Uh, come pray and bring somebody with you, and uh, uh, we're going to visit the bus route, so don't forget that, okay? All right, let's uh, be friendly. Let's everybody stand, take just a minute or two, and fellowship just a little bit, and be friendly in the Lord. standing for offering now if you would please just remain standing please for our offering tonight hope everybody will uh, give and honor the Lord I don't know if you know this or not but today is Miss Phyllis's birthday and she's going to come and sing up here uh, and lead us in prayer since she laid out of church <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding her. Uh, she gave me a mean look. I better hush right there. Amen. All right, everybody give the honor of the Lord this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming to church on Wednesday night is good for you. It gives you a little boost in the middle of the week to help you over the hump, get you on through end of the week. So uh, let's everybody give, honor God, and uh, he'll bless you for it, okay? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us. We pray now that you'd bless this offering. Let it be what you want it to be. And meet the needs of our church as we get ready for the youth rally and the, and the exciting days ahead. Have your way in our life, Lord. Help us to be a blessing to somebody tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Bibles open now. Everybody get your Bible. We're going to get in it tonight. Get your Bibles out, please. Everybody get your Bible out. Uh, amen. Get in the Word of God here for a few minutes this evening. Hello. Sorry about that, brother. One, two. One, two. One, two. Uh, still ain't on. One, two. One, two, three. One, there we go. Now I'll turn it down just a little bit. Okay, let's get our Bibles up down just a little bit, please. Uh, let's get our Bibles open here tonight. We'll start in 2 Peter chapter 2, and then we're going to look at a verse, uh, well, some, maybe some other verses somewhere else, but let's begin with 2 Peter chapter number 2. Everybody keeping up in your Bible reading? Everybody up? All right, good. I'm right on target. I think I'm maybe two chapters behind in the new. I'm not sure. I can go by. I, I write it down when I'm starting a new book. And that way I know exactly where I was at last year. So you should be in Deuteronomy by now, Carrie. Are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, she's keeping up this year. And um, nobody here is so busy that you can't read uh, five chapters a day in the Bible. You, you ain't that busy. You choose not to. So let's uh, get in the Word of God, y'all. Get in it. Man shall not live by bread alone. I've read it through all these many years, and I'm getting stuff that I've, I've never got before this time through. Just getting clearer and clearer. All right, now tonight we begin this study on what is a Muslim, and we'll study about Islam. We'll start with 2 Peter chapter 2 and look at verse number 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. That was back then, even in the Old Testament he's referring to. Even as there shall, future, be false teachers among you, who privily, that's private, privily, that's old English word, you should have no problem with that, shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. That's a bad, that's a King James denunciation of false teaching. Damnable heresies. Heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring up on themselves swift destruction. And many, one and a half billion in this case, shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. That verse said, there will be false teachers come and bring so many people after them that millions of people will follow them and speak evil of the real truth. Just like it's happening today. I'd like to talk to you tonight a little bit about it. Um, Islam. Now, ever since 9-11, things have drastically changed in this country. Uh, when we, all, we had the terrorist attack of the, um, the uh, Alchandran, uh, Kansas or somewhere, where was that building That in 93? It was Oklahoma City. Yeah, that one. And then, is that thunder? It's weird, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, we had that one, and then we had the act, uh, attack on the World Trade Center, I think, in 93. And then the big one in, at 9-11, 2001, that when, the, when our... World Trade Center was knocked down by terrorists. Nineteen of them all believe in radical Islamic terrorism. Now, let me let me say a couple things right quick, then we're going to study it. I don't claim to be author an authority on Islam. I've done a little bit of studying. I know a little bit. And so I do not claim to know the answer to every question. And I do certainly not want to misrepresent them. Um, you hear it all the time on TV that Islam is a religion of peace. The, the actual word Islam means submission. Submission. That word means submission. And Muslim means one who submits. 
to, to God. And the main teaching is submit to God. Submit to God. But And uh, I, I do believe, I do believe, I don't know this for a fact, we're, we're here in the, in the mountains of, of North Carolina, so we're not really exposed to large uh, Islamic communities like there would be in New York. Or maybe in some big city, we just meet one here and here and there. Uh, uh, someone who's a, a Muslim here and there. So I can't speak for the whole crowd, but I do believe this. I do do believe that thousands, millions are, of Muslims are probably peace-loving people, and that are, that are not they're not terrorists. They're terrorists are fringe groups, and that I, I will say some other things about that too. So I think. Just like everything else you hear me talk about, there's there's ditches on both sides of the road. There are Christians who paint all Muslims as just murderers. And that ain't right. That ain't right. And then there's others, the, the news media, for example, who paint Muslims as peace-loving people. And you can't really blame them for hitting us because we've been mean to them. And that's wrong. And as always, the truth is right smack down the middle of the road like it always is. You can go off the left too far. You can go off the right too far. Now, you know good and well, there's there's probably, I know they are, good-hearted uh, Muslim women, men, young people who are true and devoted in what they believe and, and wouldn't harm a fly, probably. I'm not sure they are. I heard a guy, this guy call in the radio program, and this guy was teaching on Islam. And how that it is. And somebody brought up the statement. They said this. They said, uh, uh, this girl, I don't know what her name is. Man, she's good. She's, she is tremendous, this lady. You ought, to, you ought to get some of her, watch some of her videos. I can't remember what her name is. I'll try to find out and give that to you. But uh, she, she is actually uh, from Iraq or Iran or somewhere. And uh, she teaches now uh, the dangers of Islam. And she said, that what they're saying is out of out of a billion, let's just say a billion Muslims, that 25% are would be violent or kill people. Let's just say that's true. I don't know if it is or not. Let's just say it is. 25% of a billion is 250 million. That's a lot of people at a minimum. There's only 350 in the United States of America. So that's over a half the people that live in America would be considered terrorist or dangerous fringe Muslim. And in this radio program, this guy called in and he said, I'm sick of you people misrepresenting us. We are a peace-loving people. We are a, a, a God-loving people. And you people are always portraying us as being mean and dangerous. And that ain't right. And you shouldn't portray, uh, portray us like that. And he said, I, uh, our, our mosque is right straight across the street from a church. And he said, I was leaving our mosque one day. And the Christians was coming out of their church. And I met a Christian man. And I said, how you doing today, sir? And that Christian man looked back at me and he said, I'm not supposed to talk to you and went on down the street. And he said, if that's what they're teaching Christian people, uh, you Christian people, you're portraying us as the mean ones. You're the mean ones. And you know, that that was his, it, that was where he was coming from. He was saying, y'all are calling us mean. You're the mean ones because you hate us. And uh, the guy, the guy uh, running the program said, look, look, that, if that happened, and he pulled out a quote from Muhammad, and he pulled out a quote from Muhammad, he said, uh, he said, you, you are mad at us for judging all Muslims by what the terrorists did, and now you're judging all Christians by what that one man did. That's not right. You can't judge all Christians. There's some crazy Christians in the world, people. I mean, some of the most atrocious crimes in the world have been committed by so-called Christians. So uh, most of the wars have involved some kind of professive Christian group. You, you cannot say somebody did this and they're a Christian, so all Christians are like that. So that, that creates a big problem. Now, so we're not, we're not 
we're not going to get into this thing of who's right in every individual case. All we want to talk about is what's right. What's right. And uh, you know what the guy told him? He gave him a quote from Muhammad. He said, let me quote your prophet. He said, your prophet said this. He said, um, there's toes. I'm sorry about that, brother. Had a little mix up there. And uh, 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 he, he said, your prophet said this. He said, Muhammad said, if you go out down the street and meet an unbeliever, that means anybody that's not Muslim, said you are to not speak to them and go across the street. Now, is, Mu is Muhammad wrong? He quoted him at. I mean, that guy was sharp. And he beat around the bush and said, well, you're changing the subject. Well, he said, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're mad at that Christian because he wouldn't speak to you. And now here, you're, Muhammad said, if you meet an infidel, that's what all of us are. Anybody, not a Muslim, infidel. If you meet an infidel, you're to go on the other side of the street or force him to the other side of the street. So you, you got to, what we got in the country is a bunch of people slinging mud back and forth. And ain't none of them know what you're talking about hardly. But I will say this, y'all. I try to be balanced and fair. And I, I, I watched a little bit of a documentary put out by uh, the, the new, is like, what, BC, what's BBC? Is that? Okay, I think it was that. I think it was that. I watched a little bit of it. And from start to finish, it was saying Christianity and Islam are so much alike, we should chill out and all love each other. And basically, that's what the whole news media said. i tell you what I think. I think our government got scared after 9-11. And uh, I think we got scared to death. And we've been trying to uh, be sweet to them ever since in, in Iraq and Iran so they won't hit us no more. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that approach is always wrong. I'm not saying go to war every time something happens. I don't want another war. I don't, I'd hate to see us get into another all-out war. It's, it's coming sooner or later, but I'm not for war. I'm really not. But uh, people, uh, this, this thing is it's getting so... Uh, it, I, I'll get into some statistics next week, but because of the heavy flow of immigration in our country and in, in England... Did you know that I, I'll give you? I'm going to give you all a CD tonight to every family who wants one. Take and listen to this guy who's an expert for years and years and years. The number one name given to children, babies born in London now is Muhammad. That's in London. They're being overrun. The UK is being overrun by immigrants. And a Muslim man has an average of four wives. Each wife has to bear eight children. If you have more than, if you have more than uh, less than, uh, you know, less than five children, it's a disgrace. So uh, one man, four wives, 32 kids, and all of them are living off our government and me and our, our tax dollars. And paid for, most of them. I'll talk more about that next week. And in other countries, they're going bankrupt because of it. While Americans are being told, don't have but two kids, don't have but two kids, population's getting out of control. We're seeing a shift. So in another 20 years, y'all, it's going to be a bad, bad scene. Now, I want to give you a few little facts here to begin with. Um, five times a day, uh, there's a sound made, and all dedicated Muslims are supposed to bow and pray five times a day toward Mecca. And that would be uh, that way from, from here. Right? Maybe that way, sort of. South, way across the ocean, over yonder. And you've all seen them where they, where they uh, do like that, and there's about a million of them, and all of a sudden everybody just goes, like that, you know. And they say, I don't know what to do, but they all do that at the same time. And it's very impressive. That's very impressive. People say, oh, isn't that their dedication so wonderful? What they're doing is bowing toward Mecca. Mecca is their place where they are supposed to visit at least once in their lifetime. Uh, uh, Muhammad went to those two, two cities, Medina, Medina, Medina and Mecca, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Let me just, I'm just going to talk off the top of my head here just for a minute. Uh, what is it and how does it differ 
from Christianity. Um, um, the fastest growing religious group in the, in, the, in the country, probably, and because of the heavy influx of migrants. And the doctrine of Islam allows for no other faith to exist without being Muslim. In other words, you talk about intolerant. You talk about intolerant. We're not intolerant. We don't kill people that disagree with us. I know they said Christians used to. That was the Catholic Church that did that. No real Christian kills people just because they disagree with them. No real Christian forbids somebody from believing whatever they want to believe. Real Christians say, look, you believe what you want to, but I'm going to preach Jesus to you and try to get you saved, try to get you to live for the Lord and serve the Lord. If you don't, that's up to you. That's up to you. Nobody is killed or nobody's forced to believe or bow to anything. That's no good. Now, uh, Muhammad was born somewhere 570 A.D. Uh, that means he was 62 when he died. And that means that he only lived, I think, 632 A.D. In that, in that documentary I watched, this lady kept saying, isn't it wonderful that the three major religions of the world, Judaism, that's Old Testament Jews, Christianity, Christians, and Islam, all trace their roots to one man, and that man, somebody tell me what that man's name is. Abraham. And they all go back to Abraham. And they all say, Abraham was our father. And that's, that's true. Abraham was our father. But the problem is this, y'all. This one, old Farrakhan and all them, all them, uh, good, I don't know what them people are. All them, you know where they miss it? They, they believe this. Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. And Ishmael was born after the flesh. Isaac was born after the spirit by Hagar, his handmaid. You remember when Sarah couldn't have a kid and she gave him Hagar, the handmaid? Ishmael was born. And Ishmael is the father of all the descendants, his descendants, Iraq, Iran, all of those nations over there. And they got the oil. And that's why gas is so high tonight in Morganton is because of Abraham's mistake he made with that woman. And brother, uh, Isaac got the promise of God. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right on down through Christianity, the Lord Jesus Christ. This way goes Ishmael and the father of the Arabia in Arabia, those tribes, tribal people. And they live in caravan. Now, when Muhammad was born, he was uh, just a little, little, little kid. And his, his daddy died. And when, he, when his daddy died, he was sent to live with his grandfather. Uh, and uh, because of that, he, he, he had to go to, uh, on a lot of trips and stuff uh, by camel and they had caravans. People sold, merchants came through and sold stuff by caravans. That was, that was the free enterprise or system, the way of living they had in them days. You'd get up furs or you'd get up food or you'd get up some, and they'd bring caravans in. And that's the kind of life that Muhammad grew up in in 600 A.D. out in the desert. It's grown now to 1,000 mosques in the United States of America. Now, here's what they say. They say, we believe the Bible, oh yeah. But we believe the Quran too. The problem comes up, where do they contradict each other? The, a Muslim will say the Quran overpowers and trumps what the Bible says. Any real Muslim will say what the Quran says, if it differs from the Bible, that is different. You say, well, what differences is there? Well, I'll get ahead of myself, but let me just tell you a few differences. The Quran, the, a true Muslim does not believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. A true Muslim does not believe that Jesus died on the cross. We're the same? That's, that's central to the, to the Christian faith. That is absolute necessary to the Christian. Come on, men. Say amen. 
Thank you. Come on now, y'all. That listen, without the cross, we have no salvation. You know what a real Muslim believes? A real Muslim believes that Jesus was a prophet like Moses, like like uh different prophets in the Old Testament, and that God took him up to heaven and he never died. If Jesus ever died on the cross for our sins, we're still in our sins. We have no forgiveness. We're, we are on the house of God. So you, you cannot say that just because we both trace our roots to Abraham that we're just a little bit different. No, 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 no. Look, uh, if you want to you live a holy life, great. I'm happy for you. If you want to fast on Ramadan, have at it, man. That's good for you, healthy. If you want to uh, do good to help, call it wonderful. But if you say Jesus didn't die on the cross and rose from the dead for our sin, then we go the other way. We go the other way. Them's parting of the ways. That's heresy. They cannot both be right. Cannot. Cannot both be right. So the History Channel and the British Broadcasting Network, uh, they say, here's what they'll say. Well, Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 93 times, and he is, but it's another Jesus. It's a Jesus that, that done miracles in the talked in the cradle and that Mary and Joseph was hungry one time and he made food fall out of a tree. That's the Jesus of the Quran. It's not even the right Jesus. That's why the Bible said, he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Listen, people, if you don't get nothing else out of this, remember me saying this. Just because somebody says, I love Jesus, that don't mean nothing. You don't you don't say, well, I love Jesus, and he loved Jesus, and everybody loved Jesus. Listen, we believe, listen, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of guys from Mexico named Jesus. I'm, we're talking about the Jesus of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was Lord, he was Christ. Jesus is his name. Christ is a title. The Lord is his, his, his position. He was God manifest in the flesh. That is the Jesus of the Bible. And that's the Jesus of the Christian faith. And that's the Jesus that me and you believe and preach. Old Jack Chick, he's done gone to glory now. They hated him. Lord have mercy. And Jack Chick, his, his uh, remember the Chick comic books they put out? No, we got Chick tracks here, but I'm talking about the comic books. They were this big. He got one called The Prophet. And in that, in that comic book, Outlawed won't have no Christian, no Christian bookstores will sell them anymore. Um, he alleges that the Catholic Church sent a nun who was rich to marry Muhammad and get a big group of following of, of Muslims to follow him so they could take back the Holy Land for the Mother Church. That's what Jack Chick teaches. He, I mean, he, I ain't an expert. Uh, he, you can get it and believe it. I, don't, I know most people don't believe that. But Kent Hovind does. And Kent Hovind endorsed what Jack Chick said. And Kent Hovind, with whatever faults he has or had, ain't no dummy. He's a brilliant man. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And Jack Chick said that his... His wife, his first one, he had 11, somewhere between 11 and 20. One of them was six years old. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, that his wife was very rich, his first one, and she, she uh, was sent by the Catholic Church to get the holy, holy land back from the Catholic Church. That, they, uh, that the Jews were occupying. In other words, get the Jews out of, out of Jerusalem and the Catholic Church could have it back. There's a picture, you can see it online, of the Pope kissing the Koran. And we're living in a mixed up world, y'all. We are living in a mixed up world. There's uh, proof that a Muslim can put his hand on the Koran and swear and lie if it helps the cause of Islam, and it's not wrong. And it's been quoted by the Catholic Church, no Catholic has to keep his word to a heretic. 
So when you hear somebody get on there and make a speech or something like that and say, we're they'll, they'll pull out an exception. Remember what I was talking about exceptions to the rule? The exception don't overthrow the rule. The exception proves the rule. It'd be like if I brought uh, if I brought, brought uh, 50 of the M K M 13 K altar, whoever them people are, gang members in here. I brought 50 of them in here, and one of them helped his grandmother last week. And people say, see there, this guy helped his grandmother. Them's good people. That's picking out an exception to overthrow the general rule. The general rule is they don't do that. You can't pull out an exception. You can always find an exception. You can pull out a preacher that's a hypocrite and say, see there, they're all a bunch of hypocrites. No, they're not. That's like a man seeing a falling star and saying, look, 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 did you see that star fall? They ain't all falling, buddy. There's 10 million still standing up there doing what they're supposed to. So you can't pick out the exception to overthrow the rule. The exception proves that there's a rule. Now, he dies in 632 A.D., by the way, uh, Muhammad did not write the Quran. From all indications, Muhammad was illiterate. He couldn't even read and write. So he's in a cave, and he had epileptic fits. That's what they called it. That's what they call it. That ain't my words. Epileptic fits, and would wallow around and foam at the mouth on the ground, which means you would call it demon possession. And he get these revelations from God. And he's in this, tent, in this cave and the angel of light hmm, appeared to him. And he said it was Gabriel. And Gabriel the angel appeared to Muhammad and gave him the Holy Quran. But he couldn't read and write. So he had to orally communicate what the angel told him to his some of his buddies, and they confirmed it. His wife and somebody else confirmed it had to be of God, and they wrote the Quran. Look, good night, years, I think years later after that happened. Now, Allah commands, that's the God of Islam, in Surah 4, verse 89, anybody who leaves uh, the faith of Islam will be slain, and uh, uh, there's a hundred commands like that. They preach another Jesus. And they're just like the heretics in America today that are doing this. You know what's going to happen in our country? This is off subject a little bit. You know what's going to happen in our country? People in America are going to use our Constitution and the freedom it gives us to destroy the Constitution and the freedom it gives us. That's what's being done. They're using the Constitution against us. And it, it ain't what it was written for. All right? They believe that Mecca, their, their Mecca, you, like headquarters, most holy place over yonder, that way, cross ocean, is where you pray five times a day. His name, Muhammad, is spoken millions of times a day by this. They said he was born under a brilliant star. Uh, Islam is now religious, political, and military. That means it's not just a religion. So remember, like on your car, RPM, good way to remember, RPM, religious, political, and militaristic. Muhammad was a religious leader, a political leader, and a military leader. So that's why uh, we're so we're so nice here in America that most people in America want to accommodate people. The average person in America, I know the news portrays us like we're a bunch of mean devils, but the truth is you go out here and visit and talk to people, most Americans want to get along with people and are, are polite and stuff. Most people are, most common people. And they take advantage of that and say, uh, well, you got to be nice to us until they get in power and then they ain't nice to you. That's a problem. That's a problem. I'm going to give you just a few little quotes, and I'll give you all a chance to ask some questions tonight. I've been a little scattered here. But let me give you some quotes here. Here's basic beliefs of Islam. One, there's one true God, and his name is Allah. Allah, as they call it, Allah. 
angels. They are servants of God through whom he reveals his will. The greatest angel is Gabriel who appeared to Muhammad. Everybody has two recording angels, one to record your good deeds and another to record your bad deeds. The prophets. Allah has spoken through many prophets, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, and Muhammad would be the last great one. So they put Jesus on the same level as Noah, Moses, and people like that. You can't do that. That's wrong. The holy books. The Quran is the holiest book of Islam, believed to be Allah's final revelation to man. It supersedes all previous revelations, including the Bible. It contains Allah's word as passed orally to Muhammad by Gabriel. It contains 114 chapters or surahs. They call the chapter the surah. Muslims also recognize the law of Moses, Psalms, and the gospel, but consider them to be completely or badly corrupted. The day of judgment. A terrible day is coming on which each person's good and bad deeds will be balanced to determine his fate. If Allah ordains the fate of all, Muslims are fatalistic. If Allah wills it, that's what they always say, if God's will, if, if God wills, if Allah wills it, if Allah wills it. Oh, Muhammad Ali, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all those, those people that's converted, Abdul Sharif, Baif, Raish, you know, weird names like that. They're all converted to Islam. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. A Christian believes there is no God but Jehovah, and Jesus Christ is his son. That's a big difference. That's a big, big difference. Prayer. Muslims are required to pray five times a day, kneeling and facing Mecca. Alms given. A worthy Muslim must give two and a half percent of his income to the poor. That's not a bad idea, but you, you can't force people to do it. Number four, fasting. Faithful Mus Muslims fast from dawn in the morning to dusk every day during the ninth month of the Islamic cal lunar calendar, Ramadan, which is sacred. Not a bad idea. It ain't going to hurt you. Uh, it probably won't do them no good spiritually, but it ain't going to hurt you physically. The pilgrimage. Muslims are expected to journey to Mecca at least once in their lifetime, and some added another pillar of faith that is known as holy war, or what men you call jihad. Jihad, in the early years of Islam, this is what I'm reading to you, was wrote back in the 90s, people, before 9-11 ever even happened. Islam teaches that Jesus was a messenger of God, not the Son of God, and they deny that he is God come in the flesh. Muslims deny that Jesus is divine, Muslims deny that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. They deny that he rose from the dead because he never was dead. They deny that Jesus is the final, conclusive revelation of God. And they believe that Allah chose Hagar and her son Ishmael for his covenant. That's You've, you've heard of the, the Muslim, Farrakhan and all them. They believe the promise of God was through Hagar and Ishmael right on down to them, Arabians, instead of Jews. That's why they don't like Jews. Allah is a God you cannot know personally. You know only the laws and commands that he's given. Allah is an unknowable being, impossible to approach or comprehend. Allah requires total obedience to Islam and weighs the works of people. Allah and the Quran relegate Jesus to just the last prophet before Muhammad. He's just one in a line of many before the big one and the most important one, Muhammad. Below his authority, Jesus was not the way. He could only point the way to Muhammad. The Bible's God can only be reached through Jesus Christ and trust in him as the only way to heaven. Allah required the works of Muhammad to complete his words of judgment to man. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with what I'm giving you right there, and uh, we'll take just a minute. I want to say this. If you know somebody who is a Muslim. I'm sure we all cross paths somehow. Uh, maybe you, your kids go to school with them. Okay. You, as a Christian, are supposed to love them, treat them with every bit of respect, and, and uh, you would anybody else. You never should make fun of anybody like that. You should never, you should never mistreat them or, or put them aside just because uh, they're, that Lord knows that they, they need the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and we should love them and witness to them and be a good, faithful witness for the Lord. Right. That's right. Uh, that's what a Christian ought to do. And for Christians, Christians treating people bad that ain't, ain't acting like a Christian. All right. Any questions or comments right quick? I know I've done throwed a lot at you in 20 minutes, so uh, we'll take the last five minutes or so. And anybody got a question or comment? Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's where that's that's where the that's the direction that we're heading. We're heading for a socialist government, y'all. We're headed for our government is corrupt one side and down the other. All of them I ain't I ain't campaigning or politicking, but we are headed for a socialistic government in this country, sure as I'm standing here, if the Lord don't intervene somehow. And and you say, Well, well, what's bad about that? Everything. Everything. God's system is God's system is everybody give ten percent. God don't say rich people should give fifty percent and poor people give None or two. God's uh, the poor widow. Everybody gave their their fair share, and that's God's system. Uh, there's so many. What they're doing is they're raising taxes so much that the business in America will just give up and quit. And they're saying if we can ever get America brown, not black, not white, brown, and everybody in the world be brown, then we'll all get along. And that's just getting trying to get us away for the antichrist. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Absolute mess. It's it's pitiful, but you as a Christian, we have to be faithful to the Lord and be full, uh, love, but stand for the truth. Speak the truth in love. You can win a Muslim to the Lord Jesus Christ. It happens. They can get saved. If, if there happens to be a Muslim, hear me teaching us this tonight. I have no no hard no animosity toward you as an individual at all. But in America, we have freedom of speech to to speak what we believe. In those countries, you don't. You don't, you don't have a right to disagree. In this country, we can disagree, at least as of right now. Anybody else? Right quick. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, and next week, uh, we'll, we'll take up a few more things like that. And the whole reason I'm doing this is to just help you understand, is to make you love, you better love them people. You better love them, baby. You better pray for them. If you witnessed, if you know someone, uh, live near a, a one or one runs a business near you or something, you better love them, give them a gospel track, tell them you're praying for them. I do it all the time. I do all the time. When I go in a gas station, uh, you know, and I can, I mean, you know, you hate you hate to stereotype people. My goodness. I mean, uh, it's not, you don't take a genius. Uh, I, I, I say, here, Jesus loves you. Jesus Christ. And most of the time they'll say, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Most of the time. I have had a couple say this. Say, oh, Jesus, he's not God. He's not God. There's only one true God. And then we talk a little bit. I say, well, the Bible said God. he's God manifest in the flesh. He's my Savior. I know what he's done for me. He loves you. He cares. And trust the Holy Spirit to convict their heart. You're not going to argue. The, you're not going to be a confrontational spirit and win nobody. You went. You trust the Holy Spirit to bring conviction from the truth that you give them. And uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard people say, "Ah, I'm going on a hell raghead." You know, that ain't no way to talk to nobody. Uh, preachers say, think they sound big and tough. That ain't right. That ain't right. Uh, amen. I'm talking about as individuals. Uh, now, now, we're uh, militaristic, military wise. We may wind up in some kind of war. I hope and pray to God not. But if we do, we have to fight for what's right. But as individual and as witness, uh, we should love. Anybody got a comment, question right quick? All right, let's stand. Everybody stand, please. Now, Andy, have you got us some MCDs? Uh, we got enough for maybe one per family. I strongly urge you, take one of them CDs. Get it as you go out back there. You can put them up beside the offering plate. One per family. And listen to it. Listen to it. Educate yourself. You can listen to it going back and forth to work in your car. Unless you're rich and got new cars. They don't have CD players. 
The newest car I ever owned is an 07. And there's a great advantage of that. I still got cassette tape. Uh, amen. You poor people's got these new cars. I, I dread it when I have to get one that ain't got a tape player. Because uh, I got thousands of tapes I listen to. All right. Hearts clear? Amen. All right. Thank you for coming out tonight. This wind up with a big crowd here for such a terrible night and a lot of people sick. So thank you for being here. Be careful getting out. It's it's nasty weather out there. I'm going to ask uh, Joe uh, if Carswell if you'll dismiss us tonight and everybody fellowship before you go. I'll show you.